Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of Luke. It's a familiar passage, I'm sure. It's uh, Luke, the 10th chapter, the 25th through the 37th verses. Twenty-fifth through the thirty-seventh verses, the chapter ten, the Gospel of Luke. Jesus is talking to a group here, and he says, <clears throat> "Behold, a certain lawyer." Uh oh, we got trouble already, right? We got a lawyer involved. <laughs> Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? What's your reading of it? And so he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your might. and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You've answered right. Do this, and you'll live. But he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, Oh, and who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And now, by chance, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at that place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him. And whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, He who showed mercy on him said to him, Go and do likewise. Ken Sensei joins me now. Father, may the words of my mouth and Ken Sensei's mouth and the meditations, the thoughts of all of our hearts be acceptable to you this morning. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now, today's text, the story of the Good Samaritan, is told in response to a question asked by, of Jesus by his Jewish lawyer. 本日の聖書箇所は良きサマリア人の話です。ある立法の専門家に対するイエス様のお,お答えです。The story begins in verse 25 when a Jewish lawyer asks Jesus what he needed to do to inherit eternal life. 第25節にあるように、ある立法の専門家が何をすれば永遠の命を受け継ぐことができるかという質問をしたことから始まります。Basically, He was asking Jesus, What must I do to be saved? But instead of giving him a direct answer, Jesus threw the question back to the lawyer. And he said, What is written in the law? What's your reading of it? イエス様は言われました。立法には何と書いてあるか。あなたはそれをどう読んでいるか。And the lawyer answered saying, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. 
すると立法学者は答えました心を尽くし精神を尽くし力を尽くし思いを尽くしてあなたの神である死を愛しなさいまた隣人も自分のように愛しなさいとあります To which Jesus answered You've answered rightly Do this and you'll live これに対してイエス様は言われました正しい答えだそれを実行しなさいそうすれば命が得られる Jesus asked the question The man answered it, and then Jesus responded by saying, Good answer, go do it. Incidentally, it was impossible to do. Now, Jesus is not saying he could be saved by keeping the law. He's simply reminding the man of what the law says. The law requires not only that one keep the law, but that he keep it perfectly, which of course is impossible. Now, at this point, the Old Testament lawyer did what lawyers always do, even today. He looked for a loophole in the law. And so in verse 29, he asked, Oh,、um, yeah,、uh, who is my neighbor? And Luke says he did this to make himself seem right in his relationship with God. See, the lawyer, he's looking for a loophole, right? The lawyer said keeping the law depended then. On how you define the word neighbor. He was probably thinking, like many people do, that loving my neighbor means loving people, loving people who love me, and,、uh, or loving people who are very, very lovable people. And again, notice that the lawyer's original question was like, What do I have to do to be saved? But Jesus didn't answer him directly. Instead, Jesus told him that someone who is already saved, this is what he looks like. Like many, the lawyer knew the right answers. But he was totally unprepared for Jesus' story. About what compassion looks like in real life. So let me point out also that this story teaches us five basic things about compassion. First, it tells us that compassion is based. On need, not on who the person is. In verse 35, we read, in verse 30, we read, then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing. Wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. 30 says, 
ある人がエルサルムからエルコに下っていく途中追いはぎに襲われた追いはぎはその人の服を剥ぎ取り殴りつけ半後に死にしたまま立ち去った So Jesus said a certain man is robbed wounded and left for dead 注意してくださいイエス様は言われますある人が追いはぎに襲われ身ぐるみに剥が,身ぐるみ剥がされ痛みつかれ死ぬままにして放っておかれた、so、he's just a certain man who has a need. それでこの人はまさしく同僚心助けを必要とする人している人でした<笑> Notice Ken said say he, Jesus doesn't say what was on the certain man's m e s h i He's just a man who has a need. Then, as he lay there moaning and in pain, three individuals came along the way. The first was a priest, Jewish priest, who saw him when he saw him. He helped? No, he passed by on the other side. Now, some people have excused the priest by saying that he didn't want to touch the man because if he were dead, it would have made him ceremonially unclean. Then he wouldn't be able to carry out his priestly duties. But I want you to notice it says that both he and the Levite who came along next are pictured coming down the road. Which means they were leaving Jerusalem and had already performed their duties. This was one of the most shocking aspects of this parable, as Jesus told it. Because the priest was considered the holiest person there was among the Jews. The priest was taught the scriptures. He, he was entrusted with offering sacrifices for the sins of the people. And he was allowed to go further into the temple, into the holy place. Where regular people couldn't go. But if there was anybody that was going to reflect the compassionate character of God, it would surely be that priest. The second passerby, as I already mentioned, was likewise a Levite. And when he arrived at the place, came and looked, he also passed by on the other side. He too didn't feel any need to do anything to help this poor man. The first two passers by saw the man, but they simply ignored his need. I just didn't want to get involved. Both were religious professionals, but they didn't let their religion affect the way they lived. どちらも宗教的なプロフェッショナルでありながらその宗教が自分たちの生き方に何の影響も与えないような生活をしていたのです。You know もう自分たちの生活とはですね何の関係もない。It poses a question: Does your, does your faith affect the way you live? お尋ねします。果たしてあなたはどうでしょうかあなたの信仰生活はあなたの生き方に影響を与えているような生活をあなたはしていらっしゃいますか
So first, the story points out that compassion is based on need, not on who the person is. So this is the point of Second, the story tells us that compassion feels something. Verse 33. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw the man, he had compassion. Now, you know, it must have been shocking to the people when Jesus told them that this Jewish man was helped by a Samaritan who had been ignored by his fellow Jews. Today we call this parable the parable of the good Samaritan. But understand this was definitely not a phrase that was used by Jews in Jesus' day. In fact, they probably never would have connected the words good and Samaritan in the same sentence. The passage says when he saw him, he had compassion. The Samaritan saw the pitiful man lying in agony beside the road and his heart churned inside of him so that he could not pass without helping this man. That's the way compassion should affect us. It should stir us up and trouble us and keep us awake at night until we do something. Should do something. You know, Ken Sensei, when I watch television and every day they report the bombings in Syria, and they say, oh, uh, 132 civilians were killed, half of them were children, and they go on to the next part of the news. Such news should trouble us. Keep us awake at night until we do something. When that Samaritan saw that suffering man lying on the side of the road, something happened inside of him. It made it impossible for him to walk away. He didn't decide to help this guy on the basis of who he was. He decided he decided to help him because he saw how needy he was. You see, there was no logical reason for this Samaritan to help an enemy in need. <laughs> Of all the people who passed by this injured man, the Samaritan had the least reason to help. 
で傷ついた人のそばを通りかかった人たちの中でもサマリア人ほど助けなければならない理由がないその必要がないそういう人がいません as far as society was concerned the Samaritan was nothing and his good deed would not change his status この当時の社会ではサマリア人は全く認められているたとえどんなに良いことをしてもその低い社会的地位は変わらなかったからです But then third, compassion not only sees the need and feels something, compassion also does something. しかしこの第3面2番目のポイントは同情心のある人は助ける必要を知るだけでなくまた何かを感じるだけでもなく34節にあるように何かを実行するようになるのです。Now the Samaritan's compassion was based on the man's need, but it caused The Samaritan to feel something so very deeply that it had to be expressed in action. So, the Samaritan の同情心はこの哀れな旅人を助ける必要から心の中に深い変化が起こりそしてそれを行動で表さずにはいられなくなったのです。So, he bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal. Brought him to the inn and took care of him. So, he didn't pass by on the other side, he moved toward the injured man. So, this is the Samaria Jim, which is the one who told us that the one who was in the house was in the house, and the one who was in the house. See, you must move toward people to express compassion. But it's not just something that just happens, it takes effort. Jesus details in a series of six verbs just how active this man's compassion was. この聖書の箇所の6節によってイエス様はこのサマリア人の同僚心がいかに行動力に満ちた積極的なものであったかを詳しく表現されました。あなたは自分の聖書の箇所にですね、まあ、赤線、下線を引いて覚えたいと思われるかもしれません。He went to him, he banished his wounds, he poured oil and wine on his wounds. He put him on his donkey. He brought him to an inn. He took care of him. In every one of these acts, he demonstrated compassion as he responded in a practical and unselfish way. サマリア人のこの行動の一つ一つに全く利己的でない誠実な彼の同情心と実際的な行動がベレイと証明立証されています Then he put him on his donkey. 自分のロバに傷ついた旅人を乗せました That means the Samaritan walked. それはこのサマリア人は自分は降りて歩いたんです We may not be able to help everyone or help everywhere But we can help someone somewhere. Then, fourth, compassion not only does something, compassion costs something. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him. And whatever more you spend, when I come again, I'll repay you. 35節翌日になるとデナリオン銀貨2枚を取り出し、宿屋の主人に渡していった。この人を解放してください。費用がもっとかかったら、帰りがけに私は払います。A denarii was a, wage, a, a day's wages. 
There was nothing more the Samaritan could have done to show his compassion for this man. But compassion costs something. Then fifth, compassion demonstrates our relationship to the Lord. We see this at the conclusion of his story when Jesus asked the lawyer one additional question in verse 36. Which of these three do you think was a good neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? Notice in answering, the lawyer couldn't even bring himself to say the word Samaritan. So he responded with, He who showed mercy on him. And for the second time, Jesus told the lawyer to do something when he said in verse 37, Go and do the same. <laughs> The lawyer is left without any excuses for the or the justification that he wanted. The second question he had asked was, Who's my neighbor? And Jesus had turned the question on him again. And said, What kind of a neighbor am I? You know, in 1 John 3 16 to 18, we have one of the most convincing, passage, convicting passages in the New Testament. It says, by this we know love, because he laid down his life for us. We also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us love in not in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. James in his practical principles for living the Christian life says in James 1 15 16 if a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food and one of you says to him depart in peace be warmed and be filled but you do not give them the things which they needed for body what does it profit <laughs> もし兄弟あるいは姉妹が着るものもなくその日の食べるものにも答えているとき、あなた方の誰が彼らに安心していきなさい、温まりなさい、満腹まで食べなさいと言うだけで体に必要なもの何一つ与えないなら何の役に立
この良きサマリア人の例え話によってイエス様は神様とのまことの関係を持った人とそうではなく単なる宗教的であるだけの心の人をはっきりと区別しておられます。We saw what the religious men did when they came upon this man bruised and battered by the side of the road. 単に宗教的な人はこの旅人が何度も打ち叩かれ、傷だらけで道端に倒されているのを見ても、道の向こう側を通り過ぎていきました。What did they do? 彼らはどうしたでしょうか They kept on walking. 立ち止まらず、歩き続けて行ってしまいました。I say to you, as you walk down on the road, the journey of your life, look all around you. Look for the battered and the bruised, physically and spiritually and emotionally. Look for the battered and the bruised who need your help. あなた方の助けをしている、助けを必要としている人をどうかご覧ください、探してください。And if you're already a believer, stop and demonstrate your faith by showing compassion for the one in need. そして、もしあなた方、すでにクリスチャン信者であれば、立ち止まり、あなたの助けをしている必要としている人々に、あなたの信仰を見せてください、見せてあげてください。Let me repeat that. As you walk down the road in your journey of life, as you walk down that road, we all have that journey. Keep looking. Keep looking for those who've been battered up, bruised, spiritually, physically, mentally. Look for them. 私たちがです、ね、クリスチャンとしてこう人生の歩みを続けて歩き続けていくときにどうかよく注意してみてください。傷つき倒れている人、困っている人、また私たちがこう助けなければならない人がです、ね、たくさんいます。They need your help. 私たちのあなたの助けを必要としている人たちです。Our Lord wants us to be a good neighbor out on the highways and byways of life. 私たちのですね、こうある人生においてそういう、まあ、助けを必要とする人にこう出会う、so、be a blessing to those in need. そういう人たちの必要を知ってですねでその人たちをこう助けまたこう祝福していく And sing to the Lord, Make me a blessing. イエス様はこの言われます「Make me a blessing. 私を人を祝福しまた私たちもですねこう祝福を。Let's do that. It's hymn number 670 in your hymnal. 私たちの人生私たちの。
Savior, I pray. I spent an hour the other day trying to find a hymn that would go with this message. And then I looked at this one. I've known this for over 60 years, this hymn. But somehow, I looked at it and I thought, that's the story. Out on the highways and byways of life, as we travel along our life, there's many people we see that are weary, sad. We need to carry the sunshine to them, making the sorrowing glad. And the prayer in the chorus is, make me a blessing. Make me a blessing. I used to listen to an old preacher. He's long since gone to be with the Lord. He was on the radio. And as he finished his program, every day, he was on every day, he would say the same thing. Be a blessing. Amen. I say to you today, be a blessing. Let's sing that first verse again. First verse again. Out on the highways and byways of life, many are weary and sad. Carry the sunshine where darkness is rife, making the sorrowing glad. Make me a blessing. practical ways to there's all kinds of things you can do there's even an organization called Compassion International which gives you an opportunity to share in the life of a child somewhere in the world who has physical needs so there's lots of opportunities out there just look for them as you travel the road of your life but more than anything else just be a blessing be a blessing. Father, thank you for the story which you gave to that, your son gave to that uh, lawyer that day. The lawyer thought he was okay. He was a Jew. He was part of the covenant people. But you showed him. Your son showed him. There was something he lacked. He lacked compassion for people. Certainly, he lacked compassion for their physical needs. But he also lacked compassion for their spiritual needs. All the while, you had already showed him compassion, as you've shown us compassion. Teach us, Lord. Convict us when we fail to show compassion for others. Make us a blessing, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.